Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM. Today we've returned to the Eight Day Old Light Railway operated by the Moseley Railways Trust, home of over a hundred narrow gauge locomotives, some of which that you can see behind me. As you'll see, we're in a shed and you may be able to notice that this looks a very new and shiny building. And that's because it is. This thing at the time of filming has been up for less than a couple of months. And as you'll see, it has already been filled with several items that the Trust own. But there is a small problem with this. Currently, there is no rail access. Everything you see in here has been put on with a crane. Behind the cameraman there, there is two bits of track which have been laid and connected to these sections. However, before they can be put into traffic, we need to do some ballasting and some jacking and packing to get it all nicely secure, ready for us to use. And so we're going to lend a hand, help out, and try and make some stuff happen. So with that, in order to put some track down, we really need some ballast. And that means it's my favorite time because we only need to go and get a locomotive. With my well-known love of Rustons, it's no surprise that I was absolutely overjoyed to be at the hands of this 1948 built example. There's something truly wonderful about the little Rustons. They are so easy to control, which means things like this, buffering up to wagons, is wonderfully easy. Well So when you're doing track laying and extending a railway, one of the things that you need is ballast. And that's precisely what we've got in these hoppers here. So I've been sent off with number seven here to uh, go and collect the ballast hoppers and return it down there, which does involve going down a rather steep gradient, which is going to be quite fun. This part of the line is known as the ski jump and it is a rather steep descent down towards the trenches and with one locomotive and three hoppers full of ballast it required me the driver and the brakeman to work together to maintain control as we gently worked our way down it's so important on this to take everything gently a sudden application of the brakes could mean the wheels lock up and once we got to the bottom and it started to level out i felt very relieved and we pushed into the point and then propelled back to the works area. Once we'd arrived, we split the train so we'd only have one hopper to deal with at a time, which we then propelled into position ready to start. As you can see, the hopper has chutes underneath which can be controlled by a person working behind the train to distribute the ballast.
and once we reached the end of the section the chutes were closed and we propelled back ready to make another run. It's important not to over ballast a section, that would mean more work having to shovel it around. Soon however, the hopper was empty and I moved the wagon clear. Now of course, the hard work would begin. But what exactly are we doing, I hear you ask? What's with all this physical activity? Well first, we had to get the ballast off the sleepers, and then we could begin what's known as jacking and packing. The jacking refers to using the jack that you can see there to make sure that the line is level. To this end, we actually use a spirit level to make sure that it's spot on and not just doing things by eye. The packing refers to using these shovels, known as packing shovels, to get the ballast underneath and pack it in at this correct level. I did try to explain that I was the locomotive driver and was not meant to be doing this, but my cries fell on deaf ears and I was handed a shovel and told to get on with it. Track, despite what everybody thinks, isn't actually attached to the floor, it just sits there. So you could, if you were strong enough, come along and just pick up the railway. And that's the same whether it's narrow gauge or the standard gauge, it just lies there. The ballast, that's what holds it in place. All the knobbly edges on all the stony bits, they all lock together and that locks it in place. And so being here, what we're doing is just forcing it underneath and getting this level so that this now, when we stand on it, stays still. Because when we were doing stuff earlier, this was like a uh, drive on it and the whole track goes -dunk, and then rises up again. So that's what all this is. And it's all very hard work and very hot, but quite rewarding because this is coming together now. We've got a bit there to do because you can still see where some of the sleepers are floating over there. And we need to do that. So that's uh, another couple of loads full. But yes, it's all just holding this in place and getting all of this sorted. After much physical activity, we were ready for the second hopper worth of ballast, which meant firing up the Ruston to move the empty hopper out of the way. Something which I managed first time. decided that I should take the wagon totally clear from where we were working and so I headed down the line and then propelled it up to the base of the ski jump so it wouldn't hamper any of our further operations. Once I'd managed to get the thing into place I put a chock in, uncoupled and pulled forward to make sure that the brake and the chock would hold. Satisfied I hopped back onto the locomotive and headed off to Trundle back round to pick up the other hopper where we could repeat the process of dropping more ballast on the line. I took extreme care when passing over the points, not wanting to run any risk of the locomotive developing an earth fault. Working on my own, I had to change my own points, and having thrown the lever and ascertained that the blades had indeed moved entirely across, I hopped back on the locomotive and proceeded back along the line past the trenches. Of course, taking extreme care with the facing points to make sure that the little Ruston didn't split them. Once I'd ascertained that we had safely navigated them, I was able to open the throttle and head back to work. And on my arrival, one of the members of the railway was acting as shunter, who brought me straight on to the remaining hopper so I could couple up and then we could get on with laying ballast on the next section.
And having dropped the second hopper's worth of ballast down on the line, I moved the now empty wagon clear so we could get on once again with the jacking and packing. Which once again, despite being the driver, I got roped into. I decided that if I wasn't being appreciated, I would make the executive decision to take the Rustin and the empty hopper away, leaving my cameraman to stay behind and finish the packing that I was meant to do. And whilst I did that, John got out the persuader and persuaded the rail to stay connected to the sleeper. And once he'd finished doing that, we dumped the last hopper's worth of ballast onto the line and packed all of that into position, which meant we now had three empty hoppers that had to return back to the top. We elected to do this in two movements because the gradient is quite steep and the hoppers on their own, even empty, are quite heavy. Yes, this meant having to do two trips, but let's be honest, I wasn't really going to complain about that, was I? Now obviously I had really enjoyed the opportunity to get behind a Rustin again and to effectively do some shunting with it. But that aside, it had been a real honour to be part of a project and something that I know when I go back to the Apedale Railway I'll be able to look at that section of track and go, I helped make that happen. With the wagon got rid of and being uncoupled, I was then free to take the little loco and trundle off back down the line to pick up the remaining two hoppers. Following some fancy shunting, the two hoppers were parked up and ready for me to come onto. So under the shunter's instructions, I set back, ready to couple up. And with that, I pulled the two now empty hoppers slowly away over the points, ready to propel them up the ski slope. 
And you may be wondering about the operation here, walking alongside the locomotive, but the controls of the Rustons were designed for this very purpose, so you could shunt from the outside, having a good view of what was going on, and then stop and hop in the locomotive when you are ready to proceed. And of course, if anything happens, and you left go of the controls, the thing would stop. And that brings us to the end of part one. In part two, we'll be taking a closer look as we lay some of the railway. If you have enjoyed this, there's a couple of videos coming up of things we've done at the Apedale Railway. And if you'd like to get involved in this kind of thing, helping to lay railway and maintain the track at the Apedale Railway, there are links in the video description of how you can get involved. Thanks for watching, guys, and we hope to see you for part two. Ta-ra.